watching and playing with yourselves to Furia. Bruce, I, I just heard it. Uh, I just listened to the new album, oh, yeah. Wedding. I was very amazed with the first tune, the first song of that. It's very heavy. I think that well, you never, album, you no, never, never did, never did an album that heavy. The whole album's really heavy. The whole album, yeah. yeah. There are some ballads, but it's uh, not not ballads, yeah. ballads like yeah, you used to do. But exactly. What happened? What? Um, what's your well, idea now? Yeah, I mean, um, Accident of Birth was like a really good record for me and and really sold a lot of copies worldwide and everybody was like, uh, oh, they, they sneaked in there under the That's wire. That's the wire. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it really worked for me and, and everybody was like, you know, hey, you know, metal is back and this is a great record. But when I came to make the new one, I mean, I was talking to Roy, who produced the, the same, yeah, the same as Accident. And uh, we said, well, we've got to make this one heavier and we've got to make this one, we've got to move this one along a little bit. So we decided to make it heavier and I was coming up with this concept that the album was going to be about alchemy. And then that just led to even heavier lyrics and gradually the album just got heavier and heavier and heavier, you know. And then this William Blake guy came along. Um, who I discovered whilst I was doing the research about alchemy. And um, uh, the, he, he was a poet and a painter from a yeah, couple of hundred years poetry. ago. And, and I discovered all this epic poetry, and I was like, Jesus, this stuff is really heavy. And it gave it uh, it's like a soul behind the record that, that turned it into a sort of a really more than just a, 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 a record, more than just an ordinary album. And that, I think, is what some people pick up on whether they know it or not whether when they listen to the whole album you probably need two or three listens before you start understanding what's really going on on the whole record and that's good because you know that's all the best albums are like that i think that it, it wasn't by chance that you became a heavier you thought about oh that. no we, do we, a heavier we album. want to do a heavier album and and roy said uh, he had some ideas for making the guitars really heavy um, and what we did was we actually took uh, bass guitar strings and re restrung guitars with using the G string of a bass guitar as the E string on a guitar. And then you increase all the rest in, in proportion. And then Any you, tunes? You, you tune it's a different you, tune. You do something with the tuning, I'm not sure what. And then the, the guitar has to be fixed also because you have to put new uh, nuts and new bridge and stuff on it. You have to change everything, right? Yeah, yeah. But what you get is this guitar that just, just sounds unbelievable. It's, uh, it's a monster, you know. So it was Roy idea, this guitar are... Yeah, it's, it was, it was Roy's idea. No, it was Roy's idea, yeah. What did Adrian thought about that? Because he's a very classical player. Uh. Yeah, well, a Adrian, a we, we faxed the, uh, the details to Adrian. It was like, a, uh, like a, um, one of these, uh, you know, model airplane kits, you know, that you send, you send him the instructions, you know, take your guitar, first of all, saw this off, do this, do this, do this, this and this. And Adrian's like, Jesus Christ. Try that at home. You know, yeah. you know, try this at home, kids. <laughs> and and he, he brought two guitars out to L.A. to start. And he, he loves it. I mean, he took to it straight away. But you need hands, like, hands of death to play this guitar because it's the strings it's like very the, it's really strong you have to be really strong to play it, play it so adrian didn't took part in the didn't take part in the the composition in this or yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you got everything you I, ready I, are i was writing with adrian in 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 england and then i was writing with roy in la where are you living now i live in london in london yeah okay. same same place same place same place i lived 18 you. years you okay. know uh but um, I find I, I go on I go out to LA for like a week and I write with Roy and then I come back and then a couple of weeks later I go out for another week and then I come back and in between I write with Adrian. It's a training process, isn't it? Yeah, but I enjoy it because it. Like it, a jet lag. Um, <laughs> no, maybe I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember jet lag anymore. It's, it's all just one thing to me, you know. Right. I keep my watch. It's 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 ten past seven in England now. Oh, this, this yeah, it's, always, it's always on English time. <laughs> I was in LA for three months. I just kept the whole thing on English time all the time. You know? And why did you decide to go to LA? Just to meet Roy or? No. Um, why that? Well, we did the last album in LA and uh, it was such a great record. The studios there, you know, they're, real, they're really good value for money. They have everything that we need and they have all the old analog equipment. That's what we want. That we want, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh you know why 
you know, why, why change the atmosphere? I'm really comfortable with it. It works great. We've made two great albums using these studios. Um, if we felt we wanted to change, we would. You know, maybe the next one. I don't know. You know, but it 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 it's uh, it's something. It's it's nice because it makes the whole thing like a real family thing, a real team. You know, all the engineers, all the same, all the all as, as accidents of birth. birth. So it's like you know, it's like oh hi guys, you know hey you know <laughs> check this out, you know, and we played it and they go wow this is really heavy wow you know. And I love that, you know. Has America affected you and influenced you in the music? Because there are many English bands that they go to the United States and they, they change the, the style of music. Like the code, there are, there are many of them. Yeah. What about for yourself? Uh, um, I don't really think about it, um, really. I mean, my roots are actually from the, the very beginnings of, of what I call, you know, metal. So... Um, My roots go back to the first Black Sabbath album and Deep Purple in Rock and, you know, Aqualung by Jethro Tull and Arthur Brown and, um, uh, you know, all, all that stuff back then. Uh, the early 70s, that's when I was a kid. That's when I was, you know, 12, 13 years old. It was right then that those records were just came out. It wasn't called Heavy Metal by that time? No, it was, progressive, it was progressive rock. Oh, it was, prog it was progressive rock okay. and then it was progressive heavy rock and then somebody invented heavy metal and somebody went oh yeah this is heavy metal you know okay fine duh but i'd still i just go back to those guys and um it, it it's a feeling you get when you're a kid and you listen to your first bands you know and all i do is i go back and i say okay i want this i want that feeling when i make my new record So I just go back and listen to, you know, the first Sabbath album. And I'm back to being 13 the years old. The first one. Oh, the Black first Sabbath. one. Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. I'm about to listen to the song Black Sabbath. Oh, also the, the, the rain at the beginning and stuff. And, and, and it was on Vertigo as well. So you looked at, you know, and it was because it was on a record, you know. You looked at the middle of the thing going, wow. Yeah, that, wow. you know, like that and stuff, you know. And I used to play it when my parents were out because um, I used to blow up their, um, they had this, <laughs> the, in, 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 in the old days, well, they used to have these pieces of furniture called a, a stereogram, right? Wow. And it was like a, it was like a fucking couch. It was six feet long and about this big and it had two pathetic speakers you know and they usually had a drinks cabinet in it and it had the record player was a hidden somewhere cabinet. yeah in, inside it yeah 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 and everything so you'd go in there and you'd like okay they're gone you know put the record on crank the thing up and these speakers were big <laughs> and who bought know. this album so you you bought by yourself oh yeah you, do you have another brother no there are a lot of people no. that started no 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 it was uh it was uh Just my, uh, just me. Uh, I mean, I had a, a younger sister, and she wasn't interested in that stuff. No, uh, not at all. She was into horses, you know, like Catherine the Great. You know, you knew by the time that you, you were going to be a singer, or no, you were thinking I was about just, oh, maybe I was, gonna. I don't know what I was thinking back then, but I was just like really, really, really fired up by, by these bands, you know, um, and uh, I don't know. I used to look up when I used to see gigs. I used to look on stage and go. I want to be up there, you know, <laughs> you know, I want to be up there doing that. I mean, I wanted to be a drummer, actually. First of all. I wanted to be, uh, actually, I, I wanted to be Ian Pace from Deep Purple. I was just, he was, he was like, he was like God, you know, in, of drums, you know, for me. And um, I, I had this idea that I was going to be like Ian Pace, but with the personality of Keith Moon. <laughs> right so i was like yeah 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 i mean uh, i'll be i'll be like this big like crazy guy behind the drums but i'll be able to play drums really really good as well you know uh and then reality came crashing in i thought i can't afford a drum kit mm -hmm. and i can't even and i can't drive a car so how am i going to get my drums around mm, and to rehearse right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah depression you know what am i going to do you know and i found out i could sing So I thought, wow, there's a, there's the answer, you know, I can sing. Who was the first favorite singer, uh, like Ian Gillan, one yeah, of these, Ian, Ian, maybe? Ian Gillan, I think. Um, Ian Gillan and, uh, Ian Gillan, um, Paul Rogers, even, I mean, even free, though, yeah, yeah Free, uh, I mean, I couldn't, uh, I can't really, I don't have the, the same kind of voice like Paul Rogers, um, but I used to look, uh, sort of try and look, 
behind the voice of what was going on in, in, in the guy's heart and in his head and try and say, well, how can I take that part and, and make feeling. that feeling and, and do, do it like my way, you know, sort of thing. Um, so yeah, Ian Gillen, um, Robert Plant a little bit, but his voice is very different to mine, you know. Um, uh, I just, you know, Arthur Brown, was uh he took part in the album also yeah yeah i asked that was like um the crazy word of arthur brown yeah, I loved it. he has got the most amazing voice and uh, i mean i i borrowed a lot of arthur brown also a few things off um lyrically probably from ian anderson jethro toll